my hometown of Hyderabad, India. And in this city, pesticides and fertilizers just bask on the ground. People are forced to inhale sulfur because of the burnt diesel everywhere. And it's not uncommon to find corpses up and down the nearby river. Uh, foresters, forests are being stripped for their resources. Uh, the groundwater is being overexploited for selfish interests. And it's hard to walk past someone on the road without bumping shoulders because of the overpopulation. So there it's unsafe to bathe in the river. It's unsafe to breathe the air. It's unsafe to drink the water. And it's unsafe to play out in the sun. So now we move thousands of miles here to our beautiful home in Idaho, filled with trees, parks, and clean roads. But however, this oasis also has its own hidden truth. For example, the Snake River is being polluted on a daily basis by contaminated nutrients, which are being dumped every single day, as well as in other major issues that salmon, which used to freely swim up and down the river, are now endangered of being extinct. And fires are becoming more abundant, snow is becoming more scarcer as we're seeing, Air pollution is at a record high, and most importantly, we've surpassed the level of safe carbon dioxide in, my, in the atmosphere, which is 350 parts per million. Now we're at 392. So I speak to you all today out of fear, because I'm a future inheritor of this planet. And I'm afraid of the air we breathe right now. Uh, it's filled with dangerous metals, cancerous oxides, particulates, and various pollution pollutants. And I'm afraid that I may have to tell my children one day that Species like the gray wolf, the bull trout, and the bald eagle all once used to walk, swim, and fly across this planet. And I'm afraid that this, this addiction to coal is a giant freight train that's becoming just impossible to stop. And so right now, when our elected officials are placing price tags on our health and on our right to breathe, and it's, it becomes our responsibility to make sure that we're ensuring this right, not only for ourselves, but also for our future. Yeah. And so, right now... Right now, we can take a global perspective. We can look at the destitute conditions of India, and we can say, do we want to be there? Or do we want to be in a planet where we're breathing safe air, clean air, and we're using alternative energy that's clean and safe for this planet? So right now, in order to make this change, which there is hope for, we need everyone's help. And so, for example, we lead Idaho uh, is one of the top leaders in this nation for water consumption. And we're spending almost, we're using almost 25 billion gallons a day. So we needed everyone to do the small things, which is, you know, turn the lights off if you're not in the room. Turn off the water faucet when you're brushing your teeth. And, you know, ride your bike if it's not that far away. That's the main thing right here. And most, and most importantly, we need to find ways to carpool, to reduce the amount of carbon dioxide that we are emitting into the atmosphere. And so, basically, we need to find ways to stay connected to these efforts. And there's a couple ways we can do that. You can check out 350.org. I've done that. It's a great place to uh, find events, find uh, you know things going on in your community which are working toward cleaner energy. Uh, the Snake River Alliance is another important agency uh, which is working toward cleaner energy. And also we have the Moving Planet Facebook page which you can join and I'm sure that there will be posted updates throughout the year in regards to what you can do to make our planet safer. And so I'll leave you all with Kind of a cliche but also a very um appropriate thought today which are the famous words of margaret mead which is never doubt that a small group of thoughtful committed citizens can change the world indeed that's the only thing that ever has thank you awesome thank you so much jason and eric and now we have senator nicole a favor from district 19 state senator an energy, clean energy champion in the state house. So happy to welcome her today, and she's going to be giving you a few words. Here you go. Wow, how cool. I love the capes. I really love the capes. It, it makes me think of, of miraculous change, and that's, that's what I think um, actions like this help us do in the state. And, you know... This whole issue of coal fascinates me because, as you all know, we don't have a coal plant here in Idaho. But we have 50% of our electricity coming from coal because other states don't want it. They don't feel responsible using the coal power, so it gets sold to us. While sometimes, in this strange trade that goes on, we give them our solar, or our, well, mostly wind and hydropower, in exchange. It's, it, we produce it here, but they want that. They want to say they're using clean energy. 
and we don't say that. So we end up with the coal power. Now, I don't think any of us want that, do we? Has anybody bothered to tell their power plant or their power company that they really, really want to see clean energy in the portfolio? How many of you have done that? All right, we got one gentleman, two, all right. This is something we need to do because they respond to consumers probably better than this building responds to us. So, um, and then that's a tragic story we'll get into in a second here. But, um, you know, it's really important to tell your power company what matters to you, what kind of energy you want to see them producing and, and you consuming. So, but beyond that, obviously, there's a really important role for policymakers not just on the state level, but on the federal level. And on the state level, there's some things that it's really important to understand. I hate to say it, but just about every week, every other week, I get these lovely newspapers in my mailbox as a state senator. This is called Environment and Climate News. And it often comes with a glossy magazine, like Climate Catastrophe. Now these things sound good, they're acknowledging we're having a climate problem, but what they do is they devote page after page to any scrap of marginal science that would prove that coal and gas has nothing to do with climate change. In fact, I noticed some really interesting things in this one. They're willing to blame deforestation because apparently deforestation, the timber companies aren't funding this magazine. But if you look at who funds the Heartland Institute that produces these and sends them to us, it comes from oil and gas companies. It comes from the fossil fuel industry. So what do I want you to do? I want you to ask lawmakers when you see us, if they know who funds some of the information that they get. And if they could please make sure to find out before they trust it, okay? Ask them that. We really, as lawmakers, have a responsibility to know who is funding the people who talk to us. Because sometimes we believe it outright because it's, it looks credible. It looks like a news magazine. This is not. This is a corporately paid for lobbyist organization, okay? Now there's something called the American Legislative Exchange Council that does model legislation for lawmakers like myself if, if we were willing to go. And um, it's not pretty. It's also funded by oil and gas industry and other entities. But you'll find a lot of legislation that goes through here kind of comes from that origin. It's pretty sad. Now, we really have to question where information comes from, but you will find that this leads to a little bit of a problem in how we convince lawmakers in this body to vote to stop using fossil fuels as an energy source. I'm gonna say, and I, this saddens me greatly, that talking about climate change may not be as effective as one other strategy. And that is the idea of energy independence. How many people believe that libertarians and republicans want to feel vulnerable, want their businesses to feel vulnerable to some sort of catastrophe that may cause our state to lose that 50% of power that we don't control? It's a very strong Idaho value to believe that we should produce and be self-reliant on our own resources, that we should have that and we should have control over it. It's a good conservative value. And it is something we can talk about. More people able to produce energy on a local level, small scale projects that operate in small communities and supply those communities and are not vulnerable to global catastrophes, and it just so happens, don't have a catastrophic impact on our climate. So that's what we want to talk about when we're talking about Republican lawmakers. I'm just going to suggest that to you. Energy independence, self-reliance, Okay? Those are two awesome things to talk to lawmakers about. Now, when you're talking to members of Congress, you know, one of the things that you need to ask them is, how much research and development money have we been putting into things besides oil and gas industry and coal? It's not enough. We spend a huge amount of money on nuclear, on coal, on fossil fuels of all kinds, and really not an adequate amount on solar, wind, hydro, and geothermal. And why does this matter to us as Idahoans? We have some of the best potential for solar, wind, hydro, and geothermal of any state in the nation. No one has that combination that we have. Why should we be a state that's dependent 50% on coal from other states? We shouldn't be. 
No way, no excuse for it. We could be self-sufficient. We could be energy independent so easily, and it would be in the economic best interest of our state to be that way. So to your members of Congress, we need to invest more money in geothermal, first off, because they're not scared of geothermal the way they are of solar and wind, but don't worry, we need to say the other ones because we want to be independent. Um, now, the other thing is positive feedback. Now, the Obama administration, though it's gotten tangled up in some unfortunate things that occurred with it, um, did put forward a solar initiative and has tried to put more money into solar um, power generation and projects. Now, I think it's very important when a policymaker does something that you like to tell them so, because they'll do more of it, especially in election times. So anytime you hear something positive out of one of your policymakers that you think you could agree with, please tell them, because as policymakers, we are probably more shaped by the positive things people say to us than by the negatives. There's a tendency to folks, for policymakers to turn off their ears when they hear somebody say, you're doing a bad job. So anything you can say nice is super helpful. So the Obama administration, will everyone promise to write a little note, some kind of little email, very easy to find on, online, say, hey, thanks so much for the solar initiative. Please follow through, through with that. We love that. We're from Idaho. We feel it could really benefit our state. We do that? Good. Excellent, excellent. Now, I just want to thank you all for being the folks in the state who get out here on a Saturday when you could be lounging at home and uh, do something about all this. You make your voices heard, you wear really cool capes, and you're going to ride around this town and let folks know what matters and what we need to do as a state. So let's go. Thank you so much, Nicole. I want to tell you guys about a couple things you can participate in coming up. Um, here at the State House next Wednesday, the Interim Energy Committee is meeting to discuss the Idaho State Energy Plan, the one that I told you about that they're not doing anything with. They're doing a review of it right now. What an opportune time for us to get in there and let our voices be heard. So next Wednesday, come to the State House, come hang out, listen to some policymakers talk, 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 and let them know that you care, okay? Uh, another opportunity to get involved, the Public Utilities Commission right now is looking at a rate case by Idaho Power. They're looking at an integrated resource plan by Idaho Power and by the other utilities, Rocky Mountain Power and Avista Power. What a great chance for you to get involved, make your voice heard. Check that out on the Public Utilities Commission website and comment. Come to the public hearings. You have a right to know about those kind of things and comment on those. And again, the Snake River Alliance can help make you know help you make those connections if you're not sure how to do that. Okay? Great, you guys. We are going to get started on the ride. I am really excited about it. So let's ride. Okay, um, we are going to be going on a predetermined route if through the streets of downtown Boise. It'll stay in the downtown core. We've got some awesome dedicated volunteers that will be leading the way. So if you see some folks kind of sprinting on the side of you during the ride, don't follow them. Uh, you know, they're doing their job to make sure that we're being safe the whole way through, that we're staying in a single lane, that we're staying together, and that um, you know the ride is going to be fun and successful. So those volunteers are ready to go. Um, please do stay in one lane, stay together. We're going to go fairly slow so that we don't break up. It's really fun when we're all together, um, and that's kind of the point of this critical mass bike ride. Um, we will be riding past these different entities. We're first going to ride past the PUC. You're going to know where it's at, so you can go to their meetings. Um, we're going to be doing a chant that goes with that location to express our demands. You can find all the chants in your little program that you should have gotten. And if you don't have it there, you, you can just follow along as we go. Um, and then we're going to be passing by City Hall, making demands there. So you'll, you'll get to see that location and do a chant there. Then we're going to be going to Idaho Power and making our final demands at that location. Then we'll loop back here to the Capitol Building. What's going to happen then? We are going to attempt to, <laughs> to take a picture of our bodies in the shape of 350 on these steps up here. So please be a part of that. If you don't know about the 350 tradition, it's tradition to take a photo of the group of people in the shape of 350. We're going to send that picture um, to folks all around the world to see what Boise was up to today. So please, when we come back, drop your bikes, get up on here, we'll, we'll form 350, take a photo, and then there's going to be some free food in the park, a chance for you to get more information, mingle, hang out, enjoy the rest of your Moving Planet day. Okay, are we ready? Yeah. Woo! All right, okay, we're going to be heading out this direction. Uh, you're just going to be able to follow some of those uh, line leaders over there, and we'll get started on some of our chants, really make our voices heard. <laughs> 